how do you normally um, track or monitor? Do we have to be the keepers of the forms or do you just load it on a, a shared Google Doc and everyone has access to them or what's the normal or suggested procedure? <laughs> Seems like a lot of tracking all these things. Yeah, so the way we do it, we have a group of organizers and we keep all the forms in one place. And then we make everyone, so let's say I'm the person that's interacting with someone who's borrowing or using the battery. I'd collect the form and I'd make all the other organizers also aware that, hey, this battery has been loaned out to such and such and that's where it is. So when it comes time for collecting or reconciling, you know, I may not be here. Everyone's aware of where the battery is, what the battery's doing and so forth. But those forms, we keep ourselves and we keep in a database ourselves. Okay. Every community, again, I think will be different. We're just giving you the overview of how, how we have chose to do it here. Okay, because that's what, what seemed to me the missing link, even when I was trying to fill out the template. It's like, how does anyone know where the battery is at any one time? And then who the person is that needs to receive a battery request form or any of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times I know you guys have heard us say like every community is going to be different, but it's, it's a very real thing. Like you set this up with, uh, let's say a church community, you may go, hey, we see each other every Sunday or every Friday. We don't need to have a sign up form. Like I know Jacob or I know Tina and she's here every, if it's that type of community, that's what you guys are setting up for your community. That may work perfectly fine. Uh, you guys, guys may choose to house the battery in, in the church in some room or something like that. Like all of these are possibilities. So we can't really say, do it this way. We can say, these are all options. And it's all going to be based off of what your community looks like and what your community needs are. So we're a little detached from each other, but we're close enough. So we communicate. We know how to get to each other's residences if we need to. So that's, this is what works for us. So just deeply excited to, to dream and build with y'all and deeply grateful that y'all been building this community support network. And also just offering a seed in terms of security culture when we're gathering each other's information, personal information too. One of the things that we've done that just ongoing is what is the bare minimum of information that we actually logistically do need in practice for this project? I don't need to ask someone for their social security number or item number or their grandmother's address or their password for their thing, right? So do I, do I need phone number, email? Do I need their physical address? Do I actually need to know that? Or do I just need this? And also like, where are we storing this information? So Google Docs, Google Forms is really accessible for a lot of people. And so like, that's really important in terms of access. It's also really accessible for law enforcement and all of the things. And so where are we storing also like for our folk, a lot of our neighborhood, our grandmama is 60 to 90 years old who do not have access to smartphones, let alone the internet. And so also like hard copies, do we have hard copies that we keep someplace or do we have hard copies available for folk as another accessibility thing? And then we go and type it up into a form. Do we keep that in like an encrypted thing on the cloud? But there's other like Tresserit, for example, or ProtonMail, right? ProtonMail is one of the, in terms of encrypted email, is one of the, the ones that's really lifted up. I use it. It's fantastic. They have a new like Google Docs, but encrypted. It's a little clunky, right? But also just that internal question. And I say that because like with batteries, we also use those, we use them a lot. The ones that we already have access to, we use them after hurricanes for ventilators, for keeping a mini fridge, for keeping insulin code. But also we use them for mutual aid spaces, which have meetings or planning things happening in our community. We've also used them as the PA system for protests. There's federal felonies for conspiracy stuff. 
about planning protest actions in our community that are going around. And so when we're thinking about batteries, that may seem really disconnected, but it's also like we've gotten charges for having medic kits, like mutual aid being criminalized actively. So not to dive too deep down that rabbit hole, but just what is the bare minimum of information that we need um, to logistically work? And then also how can we be really respectful of these people that we love and not putting them at risk um, for how we keep and store that information. So just planting that seed and grateful for advice for things that y'all found that work well in your community too. Yeah, thank you for sharing these thinking that's up on your on your mind and Meredith. These are really important things to be kept in mind for sure. And we're definitely a community for all of us to be open to keep sharing. So thanks for modeling that as we learn and grow together. Alice, question. Yeah, I want to thank Anne Meredith too for that uh, great point. So that I that was one of the questions I had on the, one of the forms. I forget which one. You asked for a picture ID, like the driver's license. Why was that? Can you can you help us understand why that was on there? I just want to make sure everyone understands that every community is different. What's required in one community may not be required in a different community. So keep in mind where you are, your community, which is why we specifically designed this program around community. Everyone's community is different. So respect that. Don't come and say, I want your driver's license to a bunch of individuals who don't have driver's license. Like you're not going to go to a middle school and say, we want your driver's license. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit that community. So please think about your community. We're not here setting up rules for everyone's individual community. It would take a very long time to do that. It took a very long time just to do it in our small community. So open mind, anything that's on the docs that we've shared are templates, which means this is a guide to help people understand kind of the things and, and the thought process behind them. It's not a holy grail. We didn't write it on stone, essentially. So it's on paper, it's editable, it's copyable for a reason make it fit your community. Hi, I'm really grateful for that first, that last comment. We're all different and we all have different ways of running the show. But if we're looking at even just like best practices or even guidelines, then th those things are things that we may have to consider. I think we've been through this kind of before and other things that we've done, because otherwise we wouldn't be in the spaces that we're in. I just look forward to us being able to learn more about how to build those batteries in our communities if you're interested in getting on this get on it and if you're not then it's going to happen regardless and there's folks that are going to want to have that i'm going to start just using that as a platform to to get people started and motivated into looking at mm -hmm. having those discussions because honestly the last time when i spoke about the solar panels i was had a discussion with several other people and they're like you know what, we have extra ones from our project and from our homes that they actually left. And I'm thinking, well, that's crazy. But if you don't ask these questions, you wouldn't know. And so the way we're going to be spending our time together for the remaining is to just do a review of how our time has been spending any outstanding questions we might have before we go back out to outside of our cadence of meeting every single week, how we want to continue to be in relationship with each other as we continue to be, uh, or uh, as we begin to tend to the seed that we planted, or we begin to plant in our community about setting up a emergency battery or a community backup power supply. Just to do a little recap of why we came together eight weeks ago. Eight weeks ago, we came together for the first time with this really, this excitement around an emergency battery, thinking about how we can come together as a community, learning from the People Power Battery Collective in the San Francisco Bay Area, the land of the Ohlone people, through the process of developing community backup power supply, sharing our experience for four weeks. We started with looking at thinking with community, talk a lot about thinking outside of the box. We look at understanding batteries and looking at what kind of batteries are out there and what are some social and political concerns that we need to be aware of around batteries so that we can navigate the contradiction to meet our community's needs immediately and looking at infrastructure and logistics, looking at people power battery collectives experience and 
what it means to understand the difference between logistical needs versus logistical wants. So then we're not wasting our time spinning in circles. And then we also spend some time experiencing building collective culture and operations, sitting through, just thinking through questions we have and practicing how we can hold questions, hold differences and opinions as we reach collective uh, agreement in diverse viewpoint. And how do you hold that space? And we're hoping that now we're reviewing now we're at the final week that you feel activated to set up community backup power supply, that we, we hope that at this point that you are able to organize and host community meetings around battery sharing and also to be able to make the connection on how to use the tools to organize more sharing resources. So it's, it's looking at this, not just about battery and the whole concept we just talked about around the launch plan is to help you implement a lot of the, the sessions and the concept that has been shared over the past seven weeks. And um, we're hoping that we get to get a sense of what that will look like in your community. And what the idea here is to just review the launch plan because in many ways it is a framework for you to think about what this could look like in your community. So as you notice, for those who've been copying, making copies of the launch plan document, you will notice that there's some yellow highlights. These yellow highlights are just, I wanted to make space for people who's already submitted a launch plan to share what you've tried and what your thinking is. And we can all hear from each other. And especially for the people who feel like maybe you don't really know what how to answer some of the question, you can, we can hear from each other, just bounce some ideas. Um, because this is our last time together. Big thanks to Tom for um, offering the labor of basically like giving individual one-on-one -on -one feedback going forward, but to make sure that we can move through things more collectively and not putting so much labor on one person. Spaces like this we have right now is really important for us to offer what we can collectively offer so we're not putting so much on one person. So just highlighted some key questions here that would be really great to hear from people who've completed the launch plan, to hear your plan, if you feel comfortable. And I would really like if Kyle, you feel comfortable to share what you all are thinking since you already submitted so early. Hey, happy to Crystal. Thank you. Yeah, we're a bit different that we're not just a community, we're a collection of communities. I'm the program and policy director for Alabama Interfaith Power and Light, which of course is state-based, and the People's Justice Council, which is mainly Southeast U.S., but uh, really national and, and international in, in, in scope. And we are just wrapping up our first federal grant, something we call from Resilience to Restoration. And this emergency battery collab is perfect training. It, it, it's just what we need for, for sharing with the frontline communities that we work with. This was a Gulf state oriented grant, but we're actively seeking monies to take it from the Gulf South to the, to the whole South. But, um, but we have existing Gulf partners in uh, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, uh, and Texas. And so, yeah, we, we want to, uh, <laughs> to do what y'all are doing, replicate this program, make it available, uh, push it to our state partners and if we can uh, escalate and, and, and make it scale. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm uh, really excited about your library of things, upcoming collab, because that's something else that we're very interested in for, for a restoration plan. If you're wondering what from resilience to restoration means, is what we're all doing resilience work. We're all tired of doing resilience work. We get right down to it because telling frontline communities we're here to help you become more resilient is kind of like saying we're here to help you roll with the punches. No, we've got to stop pummeling our frontline community. We've got to move from resilience to restoration. Like the wise coach says, you can't win if you play a purely defensive game. And this is restorative work here. So. I will leave it at that. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks for starting by naming that you're a very different 
situation um, because in many ways we are all very different and it would be really great to hear from Kyle your experience or your expectation of how you will be engaging and inviting your members to participate in the work even in your case of being wide what would the outreach plan and strategy look like what are some strategic partners that you're thinking about working with are there any um, existing communication method that you're already in the community with each other where it could allow this battery sharing work yes indeed um, so from resilience to restoration is a three-tiered system and really look at three kinds of restoration ecological economic of course when you're talking frontline communities we're talking economic elevation not restoration and since we're both alipl pjc interfaith organizations we've got an ecumenical or an interfaith component because our typical partner at the local level i say it's three tiers so there's national resource online there's our state hub partner in Florida, it's Unitarian Universalist Justice Florida, for example, that, that is operating state hub there. But our real focus is on frontline houses of any faith because we're an interfaith organization. And um, we already know that houses of faith and frontline communities operate as resilient centers. They are doing so much important work, both in, in disaster prevention and recovery. And again, we want to shift that focus from resilience to restoration. Thankfully, with, with our Gulf states, we've got, well, we're considering our first cohort of partners. We just wrapped up an 18 month grant of funding from the National Academy of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. So we've got frontline partners in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, there's a univer Unitarian Universalist church there that's heading up the work. And, Y'all have all heard about the, the, the water issues and, and many other problems in, in Jackson. Talking about scaling, we, we would just replicate y'all's wonderful model, share it with the Unitarian Universalist Church in Jackson, and let them operate as the local library uh, for uh, batteries and tools and whatever. Thank you for that, Kyle. For me, I will say that Hearing Kyle's story, I immediately want to feel like, oh man, it'd be so great if we could just reach out to our the houses of worship in my community to start thinking about scaling, to start thinking about bigger size. But I, I, I have to tell myself from my experience that it's really important to think about what is my community's logistical wants versus my community's logistical needs. So I'm not going to be getting so excited about now I have to rely on trying to figure out how to build this relationship that I don't currently per personally have within my community of people who are actively looking at a battery, really thinking about what the existing communities look like. So then we're not trying to start from scratch to try to figure out like, oh, talking to so-and-so type of network of people would be really good, but I, I only know a few people. Let me talk to my council members. This is not running a campaign. What we're trying to do is to meet the needs of our community. So if we're talking about you're playing music with your friends for every Sunday for the past 20 years, those are your community. It doesn't matter if they're justice center. It doesn't matter if they're political. It doesn't matter if they're at the size of a house of a worship or some community center. The point is, if you have a group of people you're actively gathering together, who understand that, yes, we are the people who we need to count on, that is the best place to start. Really want to encourage you to think about what your community is, like what we walked away with session two, thinking with community, and think about when we're filling the launch plan here, try not to be so ambitious. We're not writing for a grant here. We're a community trying to support each other to set up achievable infrastructure so then we can have emergency battery. The shareable is not here to be a grant maker. So this is there's no serious deadline where oh did you meet you missed the deadline type of thing. We are here to help make sure we share what we know together so that we can get smarter so we can start building the alternative that's required so we can take care of each other. I hope that this part of chatting here helps you think about what your logistical needs for your community really looks like. So you can think about what's a realistic and achievable outreach strategy. 
think about what are the programs or the way that you're already communicating within your community. You don't have to start a new thing. We're not here to sell your thing to a funder at all. What are some strategic partners that you're already talking to? Maybe, maybe it's your neighbor, maybe it's your mom, and that is great. We don't have to find some city member or some big coalition to, to like co-sponsor for you. We are not doing this for funder. We're doing this for ourselves. And what are some resources you'd need and what are some timelines so that you can have something to follow so that you're not trying to chase after something so big that it becomes really overwhelming to go through. And that's what we experienced. We felt like we have to come up with this really perfect blueprint that works for everyone. And we just kept going into circles. And that's what we shared in our storytelling session in uh, I believe the session four talking about logistics. So we share these sessions, our learning through the sessions with you, hoping that will be really helpful for you to think about what your launch plan will look like. So how can we make sure our dream can continue on? Now think about who are the people that you can keep sharing these batteries with so that you can share your stories. Because if you have a community of people that comes together every Sunday and play music for 20 years, I am so jealous. And I am so much more jealous about that than a network of hundreds of people, thousands of people across the state, but we're not actually meeting together. We don't even have a clear means of connection when we need help. So really think about what is the strongest relationship we have so we can take care of each other. Thank you all so Thank much. Yeah. Enjoy the beautiful evening and continue thinking about your community. Everyone is different and please as we're hearing other stories, use that as a way to remember you are not alone and how you can think about what your story is. Thank you all so much. Peace. Big love. Yeah. Peace.